When I was about five, I asked my mother if I could make a pisanka, which is what these Easter eggs are called. And I remember I sat on her lap and we did an egg and it was stars, circles and lines. And I just continued doing these eggs and then I started to research the tradition. It's thousands of years old, started in pre-Christian times as a spring rit ritual to bring the sun back after a long winter. And then when Ukraine adapted Christianity in the 10th century, the symbols were changed to fit the Christian religion. The way these eggs pertain to what's going on, I started an installation, a Pisanka installation, at the Ukrainian Institute of America. Let me preface this by saying that there is a very old pagan legend, Ukrainian legend, that says as long as people are making Pisanke, the world will continue to exist. They believe that there is a monster chained up in a cave, and each year he sends out his spies into the world to see if people are making Easter eggs. Now, if people are making these eggs, the spies come back and tighten the chains. But if people are not making the eggs, the spies don't come back, the chains become looser, eventually the monster will come out and it will be the end of the world. So. People thought they had to make these eggs in order for the world to exist. And it's interesting, only women were allowed to do these eggs. So the fate of the world rested on women's shoulders. I have put out the word on social media for everybody of Ukrainian descent, not Ukrainian descent, five-year-olds to those who consider themselves to be Picasso, to create a traditional Pisanka design and send it to the Ukrainian Institute of America. The installation is ongoing. It will be there until the war ends. And when the war is over, the eggs will go to Ukraine to help with the rebirth because the eggs symbolize rebirth. And in olden days, eggs were not meant to be held onto. They were meant to be used in the Easter season. So they were buried in the ground so the harvest would be better. And that's the way the eggshells will be used symbolically to help with the rebirth of the nation. I did not think that the war genocide was going to happen. So the first few days after the 24th of February, I was going through these stages of grief, of uh, the shock and disbelief and the sadness, and then anger. And it's during that stage of anger, I thought I had to do something. So I thought of the egg as my weapon. The story of the egg has been going on for centuries and it continues to today. So the fragile egg, if you think about it, is my weapon and cultural diplomacy. Cultural diplomacy is extremely important at time of genocide to show that we're here. We've always been here.